Welcome to today's video and today we are talking about the Lyle McDonald's generic Balkan routine and I will present you the version 2.0 which is an improved version tailored purely to hypertrophy training. So here's a spreadsheet of the program. I have written it down as it comes from Lyle itself and this was my go-to program in the years from 2015 to about 2018 when I was in my power building days. I made good initial results on the program but then I hit a very hard plateau and for a couple of years I stayed in the same place. So that's why I'm making this video so that you could avoid hitting a hard plateau and spinning your wheels for many months or even years like I did. So first of all the overall structure. I have written it down here. So this is an upper lower program four days per week. So it starts with a lower day, after that an upper day, then you take a rest day and you repeat again lower, upper and the weekend, Saturday and Sunday is off. So in a given week you have four training sessions, two lower days, two upper days. Now the standard or more preferred way would be to start with an upper day and after that a lower day. So it would be upper lower, rest, upper lower, rest, rest. But that's personal preference. Lyle structures it as follows with starting the lower day. So it's up to you at the end of the day, but I recommend to start with the upper day because here is the improved version of the split. An upper lower day, four days per week approach is good, especially if you are a beginner, novice, early intermediate. But after a while, when you will be more advanced, you will find that your upper days are very crowded and you simply don't have the physical capability of performing more. So when you will be more advanced, I recommend you to switch to a five day upper lower split. So it will be like this. Day one, you start an upper day. After that you have a lower day and after that you have another upper day. Only then you have this rest day, then you have another upper day, then a lower day and rest. So in a given week you have three upper days. So that will be your Monday, Wednesday and Friday. That will be the standard. You can of course shift it any way you want. So compared to Lyle McDonald's split you have here an additional upper day which would be here this upper day in the middle. It doesn't mean that you have to repeat the same workouts as here in this or this upper day. This upper day is tailored specifically to you in which muscle groups you want to prioritize or in which muscle groups you are lagging. That's how you would structure this extra day. And then you have of course the two lower days. So here on Tuesday and Saturday would be the standard to set them. That way they will be a little bit apart. So after this day, for example, you have three days off before hitting legs again. And after this you have here one, two days off. So we have a good structure here. So my recommendation is when you will be more advanced or you have more time available, for sure use this very. But now let's talk about the Lyme McDonald's general Balkan routine as it's written. So you have here the lower day and you have here the upper day. Then you have the rest day and then you either repeat again the lower day and the upper day or make some slight changes to them and after that you have two rest days and you repeat this program. So the number one mistake that you can make while running this program which will make you lose gains and spin your wheels for many many months if not years is the rep range. So here on the lower day on the upper day. These are dynamic rep ranges which is very good but let's take for example the incline bench or the pull down. The program calls for two to three sets with a 10 to 12 rep range. So we are doing here the incline bench or the pull down three sets of 10 to 12. And the biggest mistake that you can make if you are using this progression scheme. Let's say you are starting with set number one and you manage to hit here 12 and 12 on the first set, which is okay. That's what the rep range calls for. 
then you perform set number two you manage once again 12 and 12 and you do set number three and same thing you did 12 and 12. now what does this mean well this is a static rep range you only increase the weight when you are hitting the top of this rep range so your goal is to hit 12 12 12 and then in the next session you would increase the weight on paper it looks good in reality this is disaster why because the previous two sets were not effective you were not training close enough to failure so if you manage to complete here 12 repetitions on your first set either two failure or zero reps in reserve then you have no chance of performing here 12 and 12 on your second and third set that means you were here sandbagging leaving reps in reserve leaving too much reps in reserve and these sets were not pushed close enough to failure so they will not be hypertrophic the muscle will not be stimulated enough to cause growth and adaptations to make it bigger and if you will be performing this throughout the spectrum throughout the whole program you run the risk of like more than half of your sets be not productive so you will be just wasting sets here and that way you will not make any progress so for example on the program if we are counting here let's say the chest you will be performing here four sets after that three sets you have seven sets and if you will be pushing only the two last sets to failure then you did only here two effective sets and the other ones were mediocre so that's the number way to screw up the program is not pushing close enough to failure so the general guideline if a movement is safe you train it all the way to failure if it involves a little bit of risk then you train to zero reps in reserve if it involves a lot of risk then you leave like one or two reps in reserve so if you have a lat pull down you are training bicep curls tricep push downs a lateral raise these are safe movements you push all the way to failure that means if you are performing a bicep curl you lower the bar and you cannot get it back up that's failure now if you have for example a bench press or a hack squat you are performing here the bench you complete the rep and then you feel that you will not get the next rep then the set ends here and you rack the weight or you are performing the hack squat and you feel you will not complete the next repetition so you leave the set at that because it will be quite a hassle to put the weight back up it's a pain to get out of the hack squat then you will be stuck there so that's it zero reps in reserve so you feel that you will not complete the last rep so that's zero reps in reserve and if you have for example a squat or a deadlift here you want to leave like one or two reps in the tank because you don't want to risk like snapping up your lower back for example these are more dangerous movements after that if we are looking at the rep ranges overall they are decent i recommend training to hypertrophy most of your rep ranges should be from 6 to 15 sometimes from 6 to 20 on certain movements so if you are looking at the program at the very least you will be performing 6 and at the max 15 so which is very good just i would expand the rep ranges for example if you are doing the flat bench and you will be performing four sets imagine it calls here for a six to eight so you will hit let's say eight reps and then if you were pushing close enough to failure on the bench zero reps in reserve in that case on the next following sets the reps will decrease so we had eight then you would hit seven most of the time then six then five so you will be dropping here below the rep range so i would expand here for example a six to ten and also on the other movements here for example on the row six to ten incline bench like eight to twelve pull down or chin ups eight to twelve and so on so my favorite rep ranges are six to eight six to ten eight to twelve ten to fifteen 15 to 20 most of the time i'm using these rep ranges now if we are looking at the sets 
per exercise, my recommendation is per exercise perform like two to three hard sets. If you will be performing more, let's say four or even five sets, you run the risk of saving your energy at the first set. So you will not push all the way to failure because you know within that you have a couple more sets to go. So if you have only per exercise two to three sets, you can push way more harder, especially mentally. But overall here it's decent. So maybe I would just reduce here. So at max, it will be three sets per exercise. But let's start with lower day number one, squat, which is pretty standard. In the squat, it should be quad focused. So the limiting factor would be your quads. Of course, the glutes will be involved, but don't perform the power lifters low bar squat, which turns the squat into more of a hip hinge motion and going only to parallel. No, I want you to perform either a high bar squat or front squat ATG. So the quads will be the limiting factor. After that, you are performing either the stiff leg deadlift or the leg curl. So I used to perform here the leg curl because I had a bad lower back. So this works the hamstrings and glutes in a stretch position. If you're doing this stiff leg deadlift or if you're doing the leg curl, then primarily the hamstrings will be worked at the knee not in a stretch position, but in peak contraction. So I would recommend here either do the Romanian deadlift or the stiff legged Romanian deadlift, where you have an eccentric. So you don't have only the positive motion like in a deadlift. So you want to work the hamstrings and the glutes in the stretch position. After that, you are doing the leg press. So the leg press is designed to target your quads. You don't want to train your glutes and hamstrings there. You have way better alternatives for it. So here you should place your feet lower on the pad, pretty close together and the toes should be pointed just slightly outwards. So it will be quad biased. After that, you do the leg curl once again for the hamstrings. So if you are doing like a leg curl, either lying or sitting, and then you have a movement which focuses on the stretch like the Romanian deadlift or you can even do the back extension if you don't feel comfortable in performing deadlift variations and that will cover the hamstrings pretty well. And then we have an interesting part here, calves. So most of the time you see programs that are not programming a lot of calf training, but here you have quite a lot. Three to four sets and then two to three with a standing calf raise and then a seated calf raise. So that's very good, of course. Now we move to the upper day. You start off with a flat bench. So the limiting factor will be the chest. After that, you are performing a row. So the row is very abstract here. You can do a lat biased row. So if you will be performing, for example, a dumbbell row or a cable row where you will keep the elbow close to your body. So you'll be performing like this, rowing here. So it will be lat focused or with the cable, you will lean a little bit to the side and you will be performing like this very closely. So the primary mover will be the lats. And if you will be performing the row with, let's say flared elbows at 45 degrees or even 90 degrees, then you have other muscles involved like the mid and upper back, even the rear delts. So it depends on what type of row you're doing here. After that, we have the incline bench or the shoulder press. So you can choose here between the upper pecs mainly or if you want to perform the shoulder press, then the front delts. Then another back movement, either the lat pull down or the chin up, which is lat bias. So the lats will be a limiting factor. And after that, you are doing triceps and biceps, but only one to two sets per exercise. So on paper, the split looks good. If you are looking, for example, at the total volume per day, on the lower day, you will be doing from 15 to 21 hard sets in the game workout, which is standard, I would say. And on the upper day, you will be doing 12 to 18 hard sets, which is a little bit on the lower side. Remember that your upper body has way more muscles compared to your lower body. So in general, your upper days should be more packed with exercises compared to your lower days. So that's already a red flag here, especially considering that you have only two upper days per week. And now comes the interesting part. Here I did break down everything by muscle group. So I counted the hard sets that you will be performing in this one week period. 
So for the chest, you will perform from 8 to 14 heart sets. And this is all right, I have Martin Green. So you might heard from this recommendation that for training to hypertrophy, you should aim to hit somewhere between 10 to 20 heart sets per week. I tried to hit at the max like 15 heart sets. So I aim somewhere from 10 to 15 heart sets, you could say per week. If the muscle is of high importance, if it's not that important, I can go even lower. When training to high intensity, either to failure or to zero reps in reserve, you don't need that much heart sets per week. So don't stress about it. Focus on getting your workouts right. And then however the ball falls at the week, it's all right, but don't stress over it. After that, we have the back. So I have separated here in rows and lats. So the row, it depends. Do you want to do a lat focus row or do you want to do a mid and upper back focus row? So for the complete back, it will be 10 to 14 hard sets per week, which is all right. You will grow your back from the program. And now, as you see, we have a lot of red here. So from this program, you will not grow here upper traps. That's a hard proof. After that, you will not grow your neck. So neck flexion, neck extension, zero. Front delts could be all right if you will be performing the shoulder press and they will get a little bit of volume from your horizontal presses. But I'm counting here only the hard sets where the main muscle is the limiting factor. So in the bench press, the limiting factor, if you are doing everything right, is the chest. So I'm not counting here the front delt and the triceps. I'm only concerned about the main mover which will be pushed to failure. So you will not grow here the side delts and the real delts. You don't have any direct isolation work. Unfortunately, you will have small arms on the program. You will not grow your biceps and triceps only from two to four hard sets per week. And if you are thinking that you will get big triceps from the bench press and other horizontal presses, then you are sadly mistaken. I count as zero hard sets from the triceps and same from chin-ups, from chin-ups, zero hard sets from the biceps. You will not get big arms from performing the countdowns because the biceps and triceps, yeah, they will be stimulated, but they will not be pushed to failure to cause growth. The reality is you have to isolate your arms if you want to get them bigger. After that, we have the forearms, zero. So you will not develop your forearms at this program. Then we have the legs, quads, 10 to 14 hard sets, you will get good development here. Glutes, 9 to 12, also good development. Hamstrings, 10 to 14 hard sets, also good development. And calves, same, 10 to 14, you will develop your calves. Then the abs will be neglected. We have zero hard sets here and the lower back could be all right. If you will be performing squats and deadlift variations, which will work the lower back isometrically. So it should be enough. But if you will not performing the squat variations, hip hinge variations, then you must think of a way how to target the lower back. But as you see, overall, the program is focused on the big muscles. So on the chest here, on the back and on the thighs and a little bit on the calves. And that was the main problem of the programs in that particular years from like 2015, 2018, when I was training in the power building days, they were focused on the big muscles, the chest, the back and the thighs. And then the other smaller muscle groups like the neck, like the upper traps, like the arms, like the forearms, like the calves, like the abs, they were left neglected. So you did end up with a spider physique which is called nowadays and that's why you may not be satisfied with the way that you are looking at your current physique so that's why if you want to level up the program you must include the movements where the muscle groups here in red are neglected so for the upper traps you must include here a shrug variation if you are not doing heavy deadlifts from the floor then you are not getting here the stretch then you have to perform some type of shrug. My recommendation is either the trapper shrug or the shrug with levers. And if you don't have these available, then go for dumbbell or the straight bar. After that, we must add here the neck isolation. So neck flexion, neck extension, flexion you can do with a weight plate and extension you should buy 
uh, neck harness. Not the most expensive one, but the one that does its job. If you are not comfortable doing this at the gym, do it at home. Now front delts are all right, but you should perform some type of overhead press at least once per week, if not twice per week. Then for side delts, you have to incorporate lateral raises. For the rear delts, you have various machines available, like a rear delt fly, or you can perform with the dumbbells a uh, rear delt fly. So look for a variation that can isolate the rear delt. And then the very important stuff, biceps and triceps, they are programmed here, but it's way too little of volume. You will be performing one to two hard sets for biceps and triceps at the end of the workout. The way that I was doing this at that time, I was already quite fatigued from this work right here. And here I just did uh, one or two sets of biceps, triceps half headedly and I didn't push it to failure. So that's why my arms didn't grow. My recommendation is if you will be training here biceps and triceps two times per week, then in a given session for each muscle group. So for biceps and triceps, you should do somewhere between five to six hard sets in the session if you really are serious about arm training and push all the way to failure not one to two sets five to six sets then you must think of how you want to train forearms so you must include movements that are worked at the elbow so your hammer curl variations and your reverse curl variations and then at the wrist so you have wrist flexion wrist extension movements here you have it to incorporate them in the program. Now the legs are decent on the program, but you must incorporate here direct ab work. So if we are looking at the program in general, where should we place all this stuff? Well, most of the stuff that we will be adding, it will be isolation work. So it will not be systemically fatiguing. They will only fatigue the muscle here locally. If you are doing a hard set of bicep curls or forearms or neck, it will not be that difficult on your complete system, so you can add them up. So first thing that comes into play are supersets. So this is a complete waste of time here, performing the triceps first. Let's say you are doing tricep pushdowns and you are resting for 2-3 minutes. That's time wasted. Your biceps are fresh, go catch a breath and perform the superset. The only thing for supersets is they are a time saver. They are nothing special at all. So if you are performing bicep curls, you rest for a bit, you go straight into another movement that is not involved when training your biceps, so you do triceps. That's a pretty standard superset. Or for example, in the lower day, you are performing calves here. So you're doing a set of calves and then you are just waiting around for the next set. Complete waste of time. Go here straight in the superset, for example, your neck, your traps or even your forearms. So number one would be look in ways to incorporate supersets, especially with isolation movements. Number two would be your lower days. Generally, if the program is well developed, will be less in terms of exercises than your upper days. So look to incorporate here on the lower days some movements that are not standard, for example, for lower days, like the neck, like the upper traps, like for example the forearms or even some app isolation work. Look to move some of these movements on the lower day and then like I did mention you look to expand here your upper lower split into a five day variation so you will have this extra upper day where you can focus the muscles that are not worked enough through this program. So for example here you could develop an arm day where you would focus on the shoulders so you will hitting here the shoulders and you will be hitting your biceps and triceps and forearms on this day. And then you have a complete program which is focused purely on hyper. So yeah, that's the Lyme McDonald's generic bulking routine version 2.0, how I would improve it. As you see, the problem was good. I think it was even ahead of its time, but the main problems were you were not pushing all the way to failure or zero reps in reserve. Maybe you did but I didn't do it. I did leave here reps in reserve. So that was big mistake number one. After that, the problem was it focused on the big muscle groups. So the small muscle groups were neglected. And then the whole structure was geared towards the big muscle groups. So the four day per week variation upper lower was limited. 
ideally if you have the time if you have decided to get big you would expand it to a five day variation other than that it was a good program like i said i think it was ahead of its time but it was too generic you have to tailor it to your own needs think about the muscles which you want to develop and then adjust it according to your needs where you are lagging and in that way you can excel as a natural lifter you can watch this playlist next where i'm talking in depth about my hypertrophy training and that's it for today's video i hope you have enjoyed watching it and see you soon next time bye